Let's just say that I've had this purse for like ooh, oodles of time, lots of time. And it's like, man, the handle's falling off, the zipper's broke, the kids got it and colored on it. It's just bad. And I heard about this store called the Exchange Store, and somebody told me that anything that I've got that's old and worn out, I can take it back there no matter how old it is, no matter how long I've had it, and they'll give me a brand new one. That's just really hard to believe. But let's just try it out. So let's see here. Yeah. Oh, open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I like that store. It never closes. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Can I help you? Yes, I. Uh, well, first of all, what is what is your exchange policy? Oh, well, do you have your receipt with you? No, no receipt. Mm, doesn't matter. Okay, here's our exchange policy. One rule. Ask and you shall receive. That's it. That's it? One thing? Ask and you shall receive? Well, this is really pretty bad, but... Yeah, you have well-worn well that. <laughs> you worn Somebody, you well. I'm asking if I could trade this in for a brand new one. You said the right thing. Can I make a little special request? Sure, we'll listen. Can I have one with sparkles? You want sparkles? I like sparkles. You know what? what? We knew that. Okay. All right, we're ready. How about this one? <laughs> Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. I'm going to come back here See again. <laughs> Is this just not the best ever? This is so good. Okay, now, as excited as I am about this, <laughs> there's other things that I'm more excited about. Because I tell you what, I can have a great purse, but I can have one messed up soul. <laughs> and no matter how great my purse is, if I'm still dragging around all my junk and ashes from my broken, burned up, miserable past, why don't you just gather up all the ashes out of your ash pit? I got mine right here. See, the thing is, is if you want to exchange with God, you got to give up the old stuff to get the new stuff. <laughs> that means I can't hang on to these. I can't. You know, he said, I'll give you beauty for ashes, not beauty and ashes. I, so I, I got to get rid of all this stuff. I, I don't get to have a pit day where I go sit in my pit and feel sorry for myself and go over all my ashes again of my messed up life. You know why? Because whoever and whatever this represents died on the cross with Jesus Christ, and I've been resurrected to a brand new life and a brand new me, and I'm not waiting for God to do something in my life. He's already done everything in my life that he needs to do. He's waiting for me to believe it. Amen? If just by the mercy and the grace and the goodness of God, he would touch you this afternoon and you would go home and say, I'm just going to believe what you say, God. If you say you love me, I believe you love me. If you say I can do anything, I believe I can do anything. If you tell me all things are possible with you, then I believe all things are possible with you. I don't care how I feel. I don't care how long it takes. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what people say. I don't care what the devil says. I believe. Hey, 
gorgeous. Hey, woo I like that. Can I hear that again? <laughs> hey, gorgeous. You see this mess? Ew. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's my life. I can't keep them? Just dump them right out here. You just get rid of them. Put them right there, honey. Okay, sweetie. Yeah. All right. But wait, what do I get? We're going to take this away. We're going to take this one. What do I get? Just the right thing for you. Look at this. Oh! Look at that! <laughs> Change life. I give him what I am and especially what I'm not, and he gives me everything he is and everything he has. In myself, I'm a poor, miserable sinner. In him. <laughs> I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Okay, check this out. Isaiah 64, 6. For we have all become like one who is unclean, ceremonially like a leper, and all our righteousness, our best deeds of rightness and justice is like filthy rags or a polluted garment. <laughs> Megan, can you come out here, please? This is the way we are when we... in our own self. This is Megan's pre-Christ <laughs> filthy rags, messed up, miserable life. If we could exchange that for something else, would you like it? You tired of this? Tired of living like this? Dragging these chains around, hanging your head down, being miserable all the time. Well, let's see. Let's see what we got over here for you. Hello. Hello. Oh. <laughs> but you know what? She told me she's sorry that she's lived like this. Hmm. And she wants a new life. That's my favorite one to do. Yeah, that's the favorite one to do. <laughs> okay, we're gonna let can, can, let's see if we can trade this for. Yeah, something. let okay. let me have that old let's dirty see. rag. Let's see what we got here that we can trade. All right, for this. I'm gonna take this one. You don't need this anymore. No, you'll never get that back again. All right, let's see what we got here now. Look at this. Uh oh, wow. man! I know what this is because I got one. The robe of righteousness. Woo! Hallelujah. Whoa, let's see that pretty face of yeah. yours. Okay, let's get you all fixed up here. Whoa. Lord, it's a good thing you're married or you'd be getting another boyfriend today. She cleans up good. Oh, she does. I tell you what. Okay, now, we see there is a little problem. It's a mite big for her. But boy, here comes the good lesson. When we get the righteousness of God, it's too big for all of us. <laughs> but now, is she going to grow into this dude? Amen. And if you look at this from a spiritual standpoint, one of the reasons why we can't believe what God's done for us is because it's like, well, we just can't believe it. It's just like, how could I possibly be the righteousness of God? How is that possible? It's possible because God says so. 
But you see, what happens is as you keep growing, <laughs> come on, as you keep growing, I said, as you keep growing, but here's the thing. While you're growing, you don't want to, you cannot miss this. If you miss this, I have missed my whole point today. While you're growing into this, it's still 100% yours. <laughs> Come on. And I've got a secret for you. It's always going to be a little bit big. And that's God's plan. Come on, give God a big praise. Thank you, Megan. This is the 2016 Love Life Women's Conference. And the teaching that you have been watching during the show happened right here this weekend. So that should tell you that you should not miss this event. We hope that you'll join us this year for 2017 because it's gonna be fantastic. In fact, there are a lot of behind the scenes things that happen that you can only see by being here. Now, as you know, on Everyday Answers, Joyce is always as answering the questions that you ask. Well, here at the conference, we did the same thing. A lot of the ladies asked questions questions to not only Joyce, but also Beth Moore and Christine Kane. We had a great time with some wonderful questions from the group. Take a look for yourself. Run right on up here. <laughs> What's your name and your question? My name's Deborah, and I'm from St. Augustine, Florida. All right. I want to begin by first saying to Joyce Meyer, you've been my greatest mentor Amen. for many, many years. Yes. Thank you. And I want to thank you for what you have given me and imparted into my life. You're welcome. Bless you. And Beth, I'm just now beginning to know you and I love you as dearly and you are the opposite of Joyce Meyer. <laughs> <laughs> I say that very graciously because you are both a wonderful blend for, uh, for one another. You blend each other perfectly, and I hope that Joyce will have you back again. You are so Thank kind. You. Here's what she meant, My Beth. Father. You're sweet, and I'm a little rough. <laughs> and Joyce, I love you because of your roughness. It's because of that that I Boy, bear I, witness I, with I you. Confident. I, Amen. Amen. I am so glad I'm not part of this. That's all I can say. <laughs> You're glad she don't know you. Okay, so my like question this. is this. When I heard that my father was terminally ill, I asked three things of God. God answered two of my three prayers. The third one was, Lord, please let me witness my father accepting Christ before he dies. I did not get the chance to do that. To this day, I'm not sure that he ever did. How does one get over that? Well, you know, I, I say this in totally the right spirit, and I understand why you're asking the question, but I don't. First of all, none of us knows for sure whether somebody accepted Christ or not. That's something that you have to take by faith. And secondly, you have to always keep in mind that when you're praying anything for somebody else, it's totally different than praying something for yourself. Because when you pray for somebody else, their free will is involved. And so you... You just can't make another person, no matter how much you want them to be saved, you can't make them receive Christ. If God answered your prayer 
and it wasn't what your father wanted, then he'd have to move against his free will to do that. And he won't do that for any of us. So the thing that the reason you can go on is because you know that you prayed the right prayer. You asked for the right thing. And now you have to trust and leave that between him and God. That's right. That's right. And you know, um, I, I always think to myself at a time like this, what would we do if God had not put that one tiny little sliver in the scriptures about the thief on the cross? Right. And it, so that was just, we said, today you will be with me in paradise to that thief. That we never know what's transpiring between right. Jesus and that person right before their death. If somebody knows they're going to die, sometimes the knowledge that death is oncoming can be the sweetest mercy God ever gave because they're facing the fact that their life is nearly over and you're flat on your back and your face is looking straight up. So there, I love that he put that in the scriptures so we can at least wonder, might there have been, is there a precedent in the word that that could happen right at the last minute? And there is. Amen. Amen. Well, you know how much we love answering your questions. And of course here, Joyce with her friends, Beth and Chris Kane did a fantastic job. We're going to keep answering those questions. So we hope you'll send them in and we'll answer them right here on Everyday Answers. But first, let me invite you to come to one of our Love Life Women's Conference. Join us this year. It is so much fun. We have great guests who are going to be with us. You're going to see all the wonderful stuff that's happening right now and you'll be so glad you came now if you have a question you can send it to us on social media use Facebook the Joyce Meyer Ministries page use Twitter hashtag ask Joyce and be watching right here as we answer those questions I say we I mean Joyce but she answers them directly from God's Word right now let's get back to that teaching People just try so hard to live the Christian life. And <laughs> can I just tell you the truth? You really can't live the Christian life. You say, well, then what do you got us here for? What is it exactly that you're trying to do? I'm trying to tell you that you've got to give up trying to do it and let Jesus do it through you. The biggest question that people have is what can I do? The point is, is not that you do good to try to earn something from God that he already has provided for you as a free gift, but because you see what he's done for you, what great things he has done for you, because of that, you get up every day and you want to do the very best you can not to get anything from God, but to just say thank you for what he's already done for you. And this is the hardest thing for us to get through our heads. People constantly say to me, so now what can I do? <laughs> When I go home, what is it? <laughs> is there a certain thing I can study? Is there a certain scripture I can read? Well, the thing is, is God will guide you. He'll lead you. What I'm going to tell you is fall in love with Jesus. Just fall in love with Jesus and just let him love up on you and Believe what he says in the word and do the best you can every day, but know that every day you're going to fall short and you're going to need Jesus once again to forgive you, to give you mercy. And I will tell you the truth. I mean, I am passionate to do the right things. Sometimes I will say to God, I hope you're pleased. Because I really, I really, really, really want to please God. But not because I think I have to. Not because I think he's going to love me anymore if I'm a better little girl. That's what we get from people. That's what I got from my parents. 
And what they gave me really wasn't even love to start with. That's not, that's not even what he wants from us. He wants us to serve him because we just love him so much that any little thing that we could do, I try to do what's right because I love God, not because I think that I have to. And see, when you fall in love with Jesus and you let him love you and, and I, hear, hear what I'm going to say, and when you give him everything that you are, and especially everything that you're not, We're going to go slow this afternoon. <laughs> when you give him everything that you are, but especially everything that you're not. You stop trying to hide what you're not from God. Could I please tell you something and have you get it? You are no surprise to God. <laughs> he is not saying, oh my gosh. It's not like the father is turning to Jesus and saying, son, I had no idea <laughs> that she was going to be like this. We have got the wrong woman. Because we are trying to use her mouth, and at home she still is getting herself in trouble. He's not surprised. The Bible says that he knows every word in our mouth that we have not yet spoken. Everything you're ever going to do wrong, he already knows it, and guess what? It's already paid for. So here we're back to the same dumb thing again. Well, so then what's the point in trying? <laughs> because you can't help it. <laughs> you just can't resist trying to do your best for Jesus because you are so crazy in love with him. <laughs> You are just so crazy in love with him that what else could you possibly do with your pitiful self but try to love him more and more? Here's your homework assignment. Go home, love Jesus, 